when I started this channel, I think I just kind of started it on a whim when I took a trip to Big Bend National Park in my Runaway Venturist. I did a walk around of my trailer when I was out there and you know, I didn't really put much thought into it. It's kind of how I like to do things. I now have about two years on it and maybe about a hundred nights, most of those boondocking. So I can tell you what I love about the trailer, what I don't and you know, my impressions overall and why I use it. So this is a 2020 Runaway Ventress 6x8 trailer. I picked it up in Ocala, Calif Ocala Florida. Uh, I don't remember when. It was a little bit around the peak of COVID. We took a trip to Disney World. I have been looking at a lot of trailers. I have been looking at Intex, uh, the Tiny Camper Company, some others. This one popped up. It was already made. I think I paid about 12 grand for it and it was available. We were going to Disney World. I put a deposit down. I said, let me come get it. So picked it up, brought it home. That's been about two years. I have put quite a few miles on it. Uh, almost all my camping is boondocking. I do some, do some regular camping at campgrounds with electricity, but most is off grid. Uh, I wanted something that I could pull behind my forerunner and that could do a little bit of off-roading. I want to take it deep into the wilderness where other trailers can't go. All the specs are basically is what you would expect with this trailer. Uh, 33 inch KO2s, they're the 285-7017. Has the Timbrin axleless suspension and this uh, max coupler hitch which uh, really lets the whole trailer articulate better than a ball also this uh, this spine goes through to the end you can add a hitch back there uh, so I built the trailer out I got it as a shell and I wanted to keep it simple and configurable um, I have a bunk bed that I can pull out when my wife and kids come along this time it is just me so i just have this mattress here i sleep sideways i have a box back there that has access from here and access from the top there's a piece that you pull out over there excuse the mess the reality is i'm not always the cleanest with this trailer i take it off grid i screw it up uh, i track dirt in here and make a mess build this shelving system I have this net to keep uh, things from bouncing out. This is a queen bed. It can fold out here. I can sleep this way if I want. Up there is a bunk bed that pulls out and there's a twin mattress that goes up there. I have another video I can tell you about how that bunk bed system works. What is this? A Lund toolbox on here. This is one of the biggest I can get. I keep all my outdoor stuff, chairs, extra propane tanks, wires, hoses, uh, tools, jacks, um, shovel all kinds of other stuff got the propane tank it came with this it is quite handy i'm not using it now though i'm just using little bottles because it's a really short trip my kitchen uh i have since made it really simple everything kind of goes in here this is a waterproof bin uh what is it seahorse um it's kind of like a knockoff pelican case a lot cheaper but I can throw this on my roof. This can, I leave this outside at night. Animals can't break into it. I don't keep food in here, but I keep all my basic cooking gear and everything. I use a propane stove. Uh, this works. I personally don't need some $200 stove. Keep, just keeping things simple. Table. This is my primary table for eating. Uh, got it on Amazon, maybe like 50 bucks. Uh, bent it up a little, but it's great. Bought one of these tables, maybe like 20 bucks at Walmart. When you come to the back, I keep more kitchen stuff in here. Uh, this is my Alpacool fridge. It is a small one. It's just enough for me. I wanted to keep everything low wattage so that I can run things as long as possible uh, when I'm in the boonies. So the fridge, the slide out is broken from beating over roads, but it... I need to fix it. It pulls out and then you can lift this up to access it from the inside if you want. It's not the easiest thing, but it is doable. Also, I have storage in there uh, that is accessible from the um, 
the side down there too and you can reach in here and get it same for this side keep things in there i generally keep pillows extra blankets and stuff in there been loading up stickers with all the places i've been also i put some other stickers on here when i got it pretty cool fuel packs i have honestly i have only used this once i do go remote places but i generally top off my tank before i have never been you know hundreds of miles away from a gas station i used this once during hurricane ida it really wasn't camping it was just i needed it to run my generator and i needed more cans uh i may swap this out for a water tank or something else or some kind of cabinet because really i don't really use that that much this side uh my some of my basic camp tools axe machete saw things like that when i'm camping on grid with electricity i put in this um this cutout and i put an ac unit in here i have another video on that you can see the link down below on how i run ac the reason i got the front window instead of an ac is first of all this was already built and it came with a front window second because i'm off grid most of the time i'm not going to use ac that often so i just didn't see the point on having a built-in ac in this thing uh i have a tv of course i'm i don't use it off grid it's just mounted for when i um am camping in a campground so everything in here i've gone through a couple different <laughs> evolutions of how i organize this uh it's pretty much a train wreck but this is books and games this is things i don't need very often because when the that is typically the side that i operate of operate out of so i like everything that i really need to be over there i keep my jackery power system right there i used to have a carpet in here it looked all nice it just got dirty and it was getting wet from slop and the whole thing was just trashed so this does not look that pretty but it's easier to clean because the carpet just wasn't working out so when i get home from a trip and this is all filthy i can just sweep it out mop it all down be done the carpet was just it, it caught too much dirt it was too much to deal with all of those things i showed you in the back are accessible from here i have a co2 detector i have these curtains they're not fancy but they're these cool maps and my oldest daughter made them for me I love them. I just need to tweak them up a little better. I know some people use command hooks. That probably works if you're just doing regular camping on roads. But when you're bouncing all over, especially when you're dealing with the humidity of the south, command hooks don't hold anything. Uh, they're, they're lucky to last a week and everything falls off. So I have screwed a lot of stuff in. I also have these lights for when I'm on grid. So the awning is some cheap thing off of amazon it's like 200 bucks i got it before the trailer i've used this for like three years so i have got great use out of this uh i broke one of the poles i got this little painter's pole from harbor freight that worked that good uh gazelle gazebo i use that when i need it i just don't happen to need it this trip but i usually take it with me got some other little things that's my toilet stuff that is a cassette toilet. I haven't set it up yet. Uh, some fire materials, rope. So I really love this trailer. So far, I've got my use out of it. There are a couple of things that kind of bother me about this. The first of all, they sell these units with uh, three separate keyed locks. They said they can't control it because it's who they get the locks from. But, you know, as a business, you're paying all this money. They should work that out. Uh, I know you can buy some aftermarket locks. That's what I need to get. But in the meantime, it's like I got to carry three keys to open three separate doors. You know, as a business, they should resolve that for the consumer. Just go ahead and buy those other locks. Give everybody one key. The doors don't always seal properly when i first got it i had some leaks i have put in some more stuff uh it's generally holding none of this is a deal breaker uh because 
you know, for what this is, it's, you can't expect Toyota quality. The power panels, those came out the first week I got it. Um, anything that is screwed into this material, um, you need to put in some glue and some other stuff. It needs to be the right screws because basically everything they had screwed in kind of wiggled out. There's other little piece of trim coming out. Uh, again, it is not a deal breaker. I'm not complaining. I'm just saying there's there's little, little things. One thing that does make me happy is the roof is one piece and you know, it comes down like this. Basically, there's not many opportunities for it to leak. Uh, it does appear that the roof has warped a little bit in some areas. But, you know, overall, not that bad. I do need to recaulk it. Frame has a little bit of rust that I need to tweak. Another thing, uh, this has never been long enough from day one, especially for an off-road trailer. You sometimes get in situations where you need to jack it up higher. And um, I've had to rig up a number of things with bricks and blocks to get it up high enough. So that is pretty much it. Uh, you know, overall, I really like the trailer. I have got great use out of it. And I may potentially get a bigger trailer. It is no knock on this one. It's just... Even my bunk bed setup, it's not quite working out because my kids are getting bigger. But so far, um, it's it's been great.